Okay. All right, good. I'll continue to admit. Let's see now. Yeah, I can see this. All right, well, good afternoon. It's in the morning, 5.30 a.m. for me, so I woke up about one hour ago. So if I, um, I'm starting the morning, so I'm starting the day today, all right? So you could see my video. Can you confirm with me that you could see my video? Just want to make sure we're all good with everyone. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, can you see my PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. PowerPoint presentation. All right. I will go back and forth between my video and PowerPoint. I'll stay with the uh, PowerPoint uh, most of the time, I think. But for now, you can see me on the video. All right. So welcome. Uh, have a high, high expectation. This will be an awesome awesome class. Uh, some of you have been looking at the case studies on my Facebook and other people have been getting information about me through other means. Now you finally get to see me in person and uh, you want to see what this bisoma acupuncture is about and I'm sure you have question and so I will go into a question and answer too. So it'll be as uh, comprehensive as we're going to try to make it. Uh, each person is going to get quite a good uh, understanding and confidence on how to use bisoma acupuncture. It will be that straightforward and simple. Uh, do have a high expectation for this class and high expectation for yourself because you will see a very good result when you start practicing bisoma acupuncture. So it's broken down into two days, uh, two hours today and two hours tomorrow. Uh, he, he, by the end of tomorrow, um, you you will definitely know how to do the acupuncture and you will start practicing it uh, this coming week. And uh, just uh, giving acupuncture for about 10 or 20 people, you will see, um, he, 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 you will be sold because it is that good. All right, so then let's start on the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, good, good. All right, let's get started. So I will go ahead and start on the webinar. All right, this webinar is about bisoma acupuncture. It's a two sets treat all protocol. So bisoma acupuncture is a two sets treat all. Two sets means that there are two sets, one set and a second set. And using the two sets of acupuncture points, you get to treat a variety of problems, internal problems and external problems. And uh, today, uh, we will go over the acupuncture points, the theory and acupuncture technique. Um, and it will be broken. We will have uh, a break some, sometime in the middle. Then before we go into the break, we will go into question and answer. Uh, and then at the end of the class, we will have another question and answer. Day two, which is tomorrow, I will give you my personal demonstration on how acupuncture is done. Okay, hold on. All right. Okay. I'm hearing that uh, one person is waiting for me to admit. I'm not seeing that yet. So uh, if the person is still waiting, let me know. Okay, hold on. Just got to make sure everybody's in and not waiting. All right. And so for tomorrow, I will give an actual demonstration on how, how I do the acupuncture. So I will show you the practical and we will go over the case study. So today is theory technique. So a lot of academic stuff. And tomorrow it will be a lot of hands-on stuff as in, well, the how the acupuncture I do with the needles and also um, going over um, scenarios where acupuncture, the spisoma acupuncture applies. All right, so let's go over to the next page. So uh, let's just go over a little bit about me. You're probably wondering who I am and 
how I got this information. So my background is that uh, I, I did get master's in or, traditional oriental medicine back in 1999 in Southern California, Santa Monica. Uh, and then after that, uh, in uh, af I started practice, opened up a practice in year 2000. So I've been practicing for 20 years. In 2002, I enrolled in an acupuncture school for PhD program. And I finished in 2005. It's called American Liberty University in California. And so I got my PhD in Oriental Medicine. Uh, tetrasoma acupuncture, I started doing that. It says 2008, actually, I started doing tetrasoma acupuncture in 2005. Uh, oh, actually 2008, because tetrasoma acupuncture, I discovered that 2008. 2005 is when I started doing the um, uh, for uh, using four needle technique, uh, 16 constitution acupuncture. So tetrasoma acupuncture is four constitution. I started out with 16 constitution acupuncture in 2005. Uh, in 2014, I discovered bisoma acupuncture. And so I've been exclusively been using bisoma. Uh, bisoma pretty much right now uh, for this year and last year for all my patients. 100% of my patients get bisoma acupuncture. It's that simple and easy to use. And bisoma will be, um, uh, it, it is a, a part of this whole big picture uh, because Visoma is, is so easy to use that uh, I keep repeating that over and over again. All right. And I am South Korean. I was born in South Korea. I came here at the United States. I live in California. Um, hold on. Okay. Let me admit a person here. Good. Um, and, and South Korea is all five seasons. That's winter, well, spring, uh, summer, fall, winter, and that includes the uh, summertime of monsoon season. So very hot and a lot of rain. And I lived at the base of a mountain and I went up into the mountains after school every day, played around, uh, caught uh, dragonflies, and, uh, frogs, and um, and picked berries and ate them. And so uh, my daily activity was in the nature. And within that, um, I discovered that, uh, I realized that nature has a lot to offer. Uh, and so when I got into acupuncture, it was more for discovery mm -hmm. that there was something really good about this, that we haven't finished uh, finding stuff yet. Actually, it's, it takes, it's going, it's still, there's a, a lot that we could find in nature uh, that treats a lot of our illnesses. And contrast to that, it's um, creating um, medicine, which is uh, a lot more, um, out, a lot more difficult, but it's also a good thing too, because we have Western medicine, uh, which helps a lot. And so we see that nature medicine and um, physical medicine or allied medicine are, uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, within the nature medicine, we acupuncturists could treat a lot of problems. Um, so for me personally, um, my personality and um, uh, what I like to do, it just, uh, I, I, uh, I'm, ha I'm satisfied of being an acupuncturist because I'd help to um, you know, fulfill the need in healthcare. All right, my mission statement is the reason why I do this, my value is to promote peace through providing accessible and quality healthcare for all through acupuncture and Asian medicine. And with the bisoma acupuncture, you, you will see that uh, bisoma acupuncture is quite accessible and it is a quality healthcare. All right, so again, uh, today, uh, I haven't actually started. I'm giving introduction just to make sure everybody's settled and um, joining in just in case some people need to join in sometime after we got started. So again, today, we will go over the horary points, the theory, the acupuncture technique, and tomorrow I will do the demonstration and we will also go over the case studies uh, 
and see how this acupuncture actually applies into the real world. All right, what is bisoma acupuncture? It's a Greek word. Bi means two, and soma means, soma means body in Greek. Uh, the reason why I came up with the Greek name is because Hippocrates is the first one uh, who started uh, constitutional medicine. So uh, he used the words like uh, black bile, yellow bile, um, phlegm, and blood uh, to talk about this imbalance in the fluid that what was causing disease in one's body. And the concept of constitution was laid out from then. And this was uh, 2,400 years ago. So around 400 BC, uh, Hippocrates uh, laid out the idea of constitution. That's why I am um, honoring and attributing uh, the initial um, beginning of the thought uh, to him. So we have uh, two constitution acupuncture, we have four constitution acupuncture, 16 constitution acupuncture, and it goes on and on because uh, there are 8 billion people on earth. And so we could be more specific for the constitution for, for an individual. Um, the coming up with 8 billion variety is quite of a challenge. Even 16 variety is a challenge. Uh, so you could start with two constitution acupuncture and build yourself up. There's no, uh, result wise, there's no, uh, one is better than the other when you do the constitutional acupuncture. Um, two constitution acupuncture result is as good as 16 con or four constitution acupuncture. Um, four constitution acupuncture goes into food and uh, herbs and two constitution acupuncture stay with the acupuncture. So I'm going to talk about, say a lot of different things that uh, may not make sense to you right now. Uh, I will be repeating over and over again. Uh, so by the time the class is done, you, you understand where I'm coming from. It's just that you're hearing new information. So you're trying to, uh, right now, trying to connect uh, different parts together. All right. So as with the bisoma acupuncture, you will become a highly effective acupuncture. So literally overnight. That means you do the acupuncture, you learn the acupuncture today, you learn the acupuncture tomorrow. Um, and this week, applying bisoma acupuncture to your patients, you will get very good result, as good result as an acupuncturist who, who has been practicing full time for 20 or 30 years and you get to do that right away. So you immediately become an effective ac acupuncturist. Second, uh, another uh, benefit is that uh, Bisoma doesn't stop there. Uh, bisoma is a part and a foundation of a bigger healthcare. And that bigger healthcare, it goes into um, uh, Chinese medicine, uh, goes go in Chinese medicine as in being able to use uh, food and Chinese herbs for treating internal diseases. So you go into the mainstream of Asian East Asian medicine uh, with bisoma acupuncture, and also with bisoma acupuncture, it overlaps with um, Ayurveda and also Unani. So you get to eventually get into bigger medicine that treats internal medicine, internally, externally, using uh, different means. And of course, you know that uh, um, Ayurveda and Unani has, have been around for so long uh, that uh, now you're making a relation to uh, that medicine. Um, so if you're already practicing Ayurveda and Unani, then it'll make more sense to you. If you do not, then knowing the diagnosis of Ayurveda and Unani is going to also help you to do 
tetrasoma acupuncture, it will help you to do uh, Asian way of doing the food and herbs. So it becomes a comprehensive, a uh, unified medicine. All right, so these are all the acupuncture points that you have to know. These are the all the bisoma points. So these are the 20 points in bisoma. Yang points, there are 10 acupuncture points. Yin points, there are 10 acupuncture points. Uh, we will revolve, revolve around all these points. So all the bisoma that I have to say is related to these acupuncture points. So all you have to know is these points and the concept on how to utilize them, then you'll be doing bisoma properly. So with the yang points, um, the, the yang points, LI1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, stomach 36, that's one set of horary points. Okay. And then another set of horary points is gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, LI5, UB40. That's the other set of horary points. That's why it's two sets in Yang, two sets of horary points. One set is LI1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, stomach 36. Second set of horary points for the young meridians is gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and UB40. Now, with the yin horary points, one set of horary points is liver 1, heart 8, spleen 3, lung 8, and kidney 10. Another set of horary points is lung 11, kidney 2, liver 3, heart 4, spleen 9. So yin meridians have two sets of horary points. Yang meridians have two sets of horary points. That's why bihorary is about two sets treat all protocol. And I will give you more explanation on that. For now, just remember yang points have two sets and yin points have two sets. So total for yang is 10 horary points and total for yin it's also 10 horary points. All right, um, clinically, uh, there is verification of the bisoma acupuncture. So that will be clinically my practice and clinically uh, with other acupuncturists that they replicated bisoma acupuncture and they're getting the same results. So for me, I've been using uh, transporting shoe points since 2005. So I've been doing this for 15 years and 99.9% .9 of the patients all get the shoe points. Um, I did not do any other style of acupuncture. From year 2000 to 2005, I did do other style of acupuncture. And also while I was in school in 1990s, I also did many different styles of acupuncture. I liked the shoe points so much that that's all I do. And since then, since year 2005, I've seen more than 7,000 people. Average people got uh, nine treatments each person. So total is 70,000 treatments since year 2005. So that's how many people and how many times I gave acupuncture and I didn't do any other type of acupuncture points. And so I have a consistent verification of 
this by soma acupuncture in ear in ear out and i also have other practitioners who work in my acupuncture clinic so in my clinic and outside of my clinic um, they also have the same result so then uh, we're we're having this uniform outcome all right bisoma acupuncture treats just about most things that acupuncture is known to treat it treats anxiety depression chemotherapy and radiotherapy side effects headache tension migraine cluster headache hot flashes muscle and joint pain nausea and vomiting physical trauma like you got into a car accident and you broke your bone or um, athletic activity you played a, a game like a cricket or you played soccer or you bumped into people or you sprained strain so that would be physical trauma physical trauma we acupuncturists do very well with uh, also pregnancy related issue breech pregnancy Delay cervical, cervical dilation, labor pain, nausea and vomiting, premature contraction. So a lot of things that are related issues related to pregnancy, bisoma acupuncture treats all very well. Like for example, in the first trimester, a lot of nausea and vomiting, well, acupuncture helps. Uh, third trimester, a lot of back pain because stomach is growing quite large, bisoma helps. What about... Um, past due term so after 40 weeks uh, the mother has to deliver the baby because the baby is growing too big and if the baby does not come out uh, one week after 40 weeks then they do a c-section because the baby is too big to pass through the birth canal so then i saw my acupuncture helps to dilate open up the cervix and Bisoma acupuncture also does the opposite. Like, for example, I had a patient uh, in the seventh month of pregnancy. She was having a lot of contraction in the cervix or, or opening of the cervix and contraction of the uterus. And so acupuncture, I think about four times, got rid of, rid of it. And so I saw the baby after uh, delivery and one year after the delivery, very healthy. And she delivered... Um, at the, at the end of nine months um yeah at the end of nine months so that was uh, very uh, encouraging so acupuncture is highly adoptable whatever issues the pregnancy related are then acupuncture helps very well okay now uh, post-surgical recovery such as knee surgery or shoulder surgery uh, arthroscopic surgery or replacement surgery such as uh, knee replacement or hip, hip replacement acupuncture helps to recover much faster mm -hmm. uh, let's say for example the person uh, is expected to improve in uh, six months then with acupuncture it could be three months or it could be four months so uh, help accelerate the healing process for all these conditions, bisoma acupuncture is very, very good. Um, very good. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not saying that's just because it treats it, but it, it, this bisoma treats all each of these very, very well. Okay, so then um, there are certain things about bisoma that are highly advantageous. For example, the result is immediate, it, mm -hmm. it's quick, and it's lasting any significant so the result is quick uh, and the result is not short period of time it lasts for a long time and the result is a lot so it's quick a lot and lasting uh, also about acupuncture it's very cool in that it applies to just about everyone uh, I live in Southern California in LA area. Uh, people from all over the world come, Middle East, Africa, uh, Asia, uh, Europe, of course, India too, and Australia. And pretty much everyone has, well, all the races have 
good acupuncture response. So this applies to just about everywhere you go on the earth. Uh, by some acupuncture is so straightforward and simple uh, that it's easily measurable and repeatable. So you can measure the result of acupuncture and you can repeat the acupuncture, then it becomes predictable, scientific. And it's so simple that it has a potential to, to be scientifically studied properly, uh, being double blind study, uh, and randomized. So that's possible with the bisomal acupuncture. All right, so then I mentioned that there are two sets that treat all. So one set of acupuncture points will treat the problem. If not, then another set of acupuncture points will treat the problem. So set A, set B, but not set B or, or C or D or E. There's only two choices. It's really that simple. And we only use the, uh, the five elements, two points on the hands and the feet. The same points, you could repeat them uh, at different times. So you got a back pain now and you get by some acupuncture, the back pain is better. All right, great. One year later, the person has back pain again. You give the same bisoma acupuncture points, that person has an improvement. So the points remain the same for the person. That's why it's constitutional, not by syndrome, not by disease. You're not treating the disease directly. You're not treating the syndrome directly. You're treating the body and the body requires some a good points for itself and those good points are what that person is born with and remains the same for the rest of that person's life. In addition, the bisoma acupuncture is also helpful for different problems, even with the same points. Again, for example, back pain now, acupuncture points, they helped. Same points one year later for the back pain. Okay, and then later the person has headache, same points. And then later the person has hot flashes, same points. And then later the person has uh, stomach pain, same acupuncture points. It's because these acupuncture points are not for the problem, are not for the disease. Acupuncture points are for the body, for the person, and it's for the constitution, for the body type. That's why the acupuncture points remain the same. Regardless, once it's correct, it's correct for other problems like these other. So same points, treat all of these for that individual. Another beauty of bisoma is that you don't need to make any diagnosis. You don't need to make any Eastern or Western diagnosis. So Eastern diagnosis would be like, is this a yin problem or yang problem or what element with fire, earth, metal, water this is? Or um, like the eight differentiation, is this external or internal? Is this yang or yin disease or is this heat? Uh, cold disease, it's just excess or deficiency. You don't need to make any of that type of differentiation. Not even meridian. Is this a gallbladder problem or is this a liver problem or heart problem, heart meridian or urinary bladder meridian? Um, you don't need to make any of that type of diagnosis, uh, nor do you uh, make any other diagnosis like uh, uh, timing, season, or meridian clock, um, not relevant. Western diagnosis, such as what are the special points for low back? What are the special points for headache? What are the special points for the sprain? There is no special point for these uh, because, again, the body has, a human body has certain points that are set and remain the same throughout that person's lifetime. Even differential diagnosis is not necessary. 
for example, or shoulder pain. Okay, there's different kind of shoulder pain, uh, such as um, adhesive capsulitis or rotator cuff syndrome or tear in the labrum, uh, bursitis, and so on. So those are differential diagnoses within the same category. Um, that does not change the acupuncture points either. Acupuncture needle size, um, they don't have to be big. They, they, they could be very small, tiny. The patient does not have to feel anything and it still works. Uh, you do uh, sujok therapy, the hand acupuncture needles. They're very, very, very tiny, even smaller than the needles for the face. Uh, they work really well on the shoe points too. Uh, as a standard though, I use uh, this size, 0 0.20 millimeter in width by 15 millimeter in length. Uh, the other size, the even thinner is 0 0.18 millimeter in thickness. Uh, hold on a moment. Give me, give me a moment. Hold on, I, I need to check on something. Give me one moment, please. Okay. I just uh, needed to send a message. All right, good. Okay, are we still good? All right. And so these are the uh, needles that I use. Uh, so you don't have to use bigger ones. You could use very thin, tiny, small ones and the result is as good because the intensity of pain um, does not make the result even better. So if you feel it, that doesn't mean it's better. You don't have to feel the needle. The result is as good. So, it, so therefore, Acupuncture is very user friendly. Okay, and also uh, Bisoma acupuncture complements other acupuncture techniques like acupuncture goes in the hands and the legs. Well, what about acupuncture points that go into the ear or the scalp or the abdomen or in the back? Yes, you could do both. You could combine Bisoma with other acupuncture technique. That's why if you already have your favorite acupuncture points or favorite style, then keep your style. You've had a lot of experience and clinical knowledge about it. And so you don't want to give that up. Combine by Soma with acupuncture styles that you use. It might be even better. Okay, so uh, Another benefit of Bisoma is that the acupuncture is easily located on the hands and the feet area. Uh, and they, people don't have to take off their clothes. All they have to do is roll up their sleeve, roll, roll up their pant leg, and uh, be in a comfortable position, preferably lying down. So it becomes very straightforward uh, for the patient and uh, for you as a practitioner. And, and because it's so easily accessible and quickly done that you could uh, treat probably six patients in one hour or maybe 10 patients in an hour, depending on uh, how well it's set up for you. Uh, so all you have to do is deliver acupuncture to one person and then go to the next person to acupuncture, go to, go to the next person to acupuncture. And then uh, you um, you circle around. So you, you're always constantly treating somebody um, one after another person. Uh, rather than um, you do one tr person at a time until that person is finished and then you start with a new person afterwards. You don't have to do that. You could treat many people at once. 
All right, and you would see that uh, this technique is easily used or easily learned and implemented. So anywhere, whether it's the mountains or uh, tropical area or whether it's a, a small town or large uh, city, uh, you will see that this bisome acupuncture is quite accessible anywhere and it's easily yeah, it applied anywhere. Again, I'm repeating these points. Uh, this, these are all the points that you have to know. First set, there's two sets of horary points in yang and also two sets of horary points in yin. So for yang, it's liver, large intestine 1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, stomach 36. There are one set of horary points. Second set of horary points is gallbladder 41, 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and UB40. For yin, one set of horary points is liver 1, heart 8, spleen 3, lung 8, and kidney 10. Another set of horary points is lung 11, kidney 2, liver 3, heart 4, and spleen 9. All right. So then these are the uh, a more specific explanation on the horary points. Okay, for young, uh, one set of horary points I said is large intestine one, EB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine five, and stomach 36. We learned this in school. This is in the school textbook. This is not anything new. I'm reviewing over this with you so that if I say something new, then you understand where this is coming from. So metal, large intestine one, metal, because uh, these horary points, they're on the uh, water flowing points. So water flowing points, the first point is well, the second point is spring, third is stream, fourth is river, fifth is sea. So the, in this order, metal, water, wood, fire, earth. So there's fire, five element order on, let me admit somebody in here. Okay. All right. Okay, so then these fire, uh, let me repeat this here. We learned this at school. This is in our textbook. For young meridians, the well point is always metal. Spring point is always water. Stream point is always wood. River point is always fire. Sea point is always earth. Metal, water, wood, fire, earth. They are the five element sequence for all the young meridians. That, so in that sequential order, the first point is a metal point, And when it is on a metal meridian, it's large intestine one. So large intestine one is a metal point on a metal meridian. That's why it's called a horary point, same element, point on the same element meridian. So then the second point is UB66. That's the water point. And then the third point is gallbladder 41. That's wood point on a wood meridian. Small intestine five is a fire point on a fire meridian. Stomach 36 is an earth point on an earth meridian. So these are the five horary points that are in our textbook, and this applies to 70% of the population. Let's say, for example, there are 100 people. Of 100 people anywhere in this world, whether it's female, male, Africa, uh, South America, North America, uh, India, Australia, 70% of the population 
So if it's 100 people, it will be 70 people. If it's 1,000 people, 700 people have these points as their horary points. They're born this way. They have these points ingrained in their body as the active points for them. All right, so let's go to the next page, next slide. Okay. I'm reviewing this concept over. Uh, for all the young meridians, you see the, I call it metal order because it starts with the metal. Metal, water, wood, fire, earth. So the first point uh, are the metal points for the young meridians, large intestine. One is a metal point, UB67 is a metal point, gallbladder 44 is a metal point, small intestine 1 is a metal point, stomach 45 is a metal point. And then second point is the water point. So second point, so Li2, oh, those are the, uh, well, spring spring points, right? Spring points are the water points, Li2, UB66, gallbladder 43, small intestine 2, and stomach 44, and so on. So the last point, for, those are on the elbow area and the knee area. Uh, the earth point, which are the C point, the C points are Li11, UB40, gallbladder 34, small intestine 8, and stomach 36. Okay, so we know this pattern. And I will go over these points with you. Um, large intestine 1. Uh, if that's in the corner of the nail, we just want to make sure that uh, we understand each other here. We're on the same page when it comes to identifying uh, where the points are at. So that's the corner of the nail. Uh, on the radial end of the distal phalanx of the index finger, 0.2 millimeter distance from the corner of the nail. So that would be more specific detail on where it is. Visually, you could tell. And this is UB66 point, urinary bladder 66. And this is gallbladder 41 point. That's between fourth and fifth metatarsal on the outside of the fifth tendon. Small intestine five, right here, right? Um, at the head of the ulna, or on top of the uh, or above the ulna, so it's between the two bones in the joint. Uh, stomach 36, that's um, that's right below the tuber tuberosity of the tibia, and it's, it's about two centimeters on the side. So it's in, in the depression between uh, the two bones, the tibia and fibula. Okay, so those are the five horary points applied to the 70% of the population. This is a review for you. Now for the second set. Second set of horary points. These are new horary points. You did not learn this at school. These second set of horary points apply to 30% of the population. The second set of horary points are gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and UB40. Um, gallbladder 44 is not a metal point. It's a wood point because instead of starting with a metal order, so metal, water, wood, fire, earth, metal is a well, uh, water is um, spring, Wood is stream, um, earth is uh, river, and oh, fire is river, and earth is uh, the, earth is the sea, right? So that is the metal order. Okay, now with the wood order, it's just like the yin points, yin. Five element points start with the wood on well and ends with water on 
um, on on the sea. So then, just like the yin, it's the order is like the yin horary points. First point is the wood point. Gallbladder forty four uh, is the wood point on a wood meridian, and then the second will be fire. Fire point on a fire meridian, that's small intestine two. Stomach 43 is earth point on earth meridian. It's the third point in the wood, fire, earth, metal, water order. Wood starting with the well point. Large intestine five is the fourth point. That's the metal point on a metal meridian and urinary bladder is the water point on a water meridian. So these are the new sets of horary points uh, that apply to 70, 30% uh, of the population. So out of 100 people, 30 people would have these points as horary points. Uh, the other 70% have different horary points. 70% have LI1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, stomach 36 as horary points. Now, 30% of the population have gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and urinary bladder 40 as the horary points. So you work with one or the other all right so one set of horary points or the other set of horary points yeah so this is the concept the well point is the wood spring point is the fire stream point is the earth river point is the metal and sea point is the water first point is li1 UB66, gallbladder 44, small intestine 1, stomach 45, they're all wood points. Think of these young uh, five element points having the same uh, principle as the yin horary points, then yin fire, five element points, then this makes sense to you. That's why the last point is a water point instead of earth point. If you do metal, water, wood, fire, earth, that order, the last point will be earth. But in the order of wood, fire, earth, metal, water, the last point is water. So the water points are Li11, UB40, gallbladder 34, small intestine 8, uh, stomach 36. That's why the horary points, the first point is the wood, gallbladder meridian, gallbladder 44 is the wood. And then the second will be the fire, which will be small intestine two. And it's the second point, fire point. Okay, and then the third, same idea. Uh, stomach meridian is an earth meridian. And the third point is an earth point. Stomach 43 matches that. Large intestine 5 is the fourth point. Wood, fire, earth, metal. So it's a metal meridian, fourth point, And it's a metal point. So that's why it's a horary point. Last one, UV40, uh, is a water point on a water meridian because of the sequential order of wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Water is the fifth point, and the fifth uh, water point on a water meridian is urinary bladder 40. Okay, just to make sure we agree on these acupuncture points, gallbladder 44 is at the corner of the nail. Uh, small intestine 2, right? Um, yeah, right. The, at the uh, distal part of the uh, the joint on the fifth finger. This stomach 43 is between uh, second and third metatarsal, uh, about three centimeters above uh, the web of the 
second and third toes. Large intestine five is between the two tendons at the base of the thumb. So uh, at the base of the thumb, you'll find two uh, tendons and it's above the radius between the two joints. So the, the acupuncture needle is in the uh, depression. So you, you could go in about um, 0.7 centimeter or seven millimeters if you put in a needle. You'd be 40 is behind the knee on the popliteal fossa, behind the knee in the middle part of the line, uh, which is called popliteal fossa. That's urinary bladder 40. Good. So we just went over the young horary points. And with the young horary points, the 70% of the population applied to the metal order, metal, wood, metal water, wood, fire, earth. And 30% of the population applied to um, wood, fire, earth, metal, water uh, concept. So that's why the acupuncture points change to different horary points. And now we're going over the yin points. Yin points is also the same idea with the yang points. The difference is that it's flipped. So yin points, 70% have wood order and 30% have metal order. So what I mean by wood order is that the first point starts with the wood uh, on a well point. And then the second point is fire on a string point. And third point is earth on a um, earth on a uh, spring stream. Yeah, stream point would be the third one. And the fourth is river point, which would be metal. And then a fifth is water point, and that's the Hussey point. That's the wood order. Okay. And I mentioned earlier that metal order is. Uh, metal order because it starts with the metal on well, whale point. So metal, water would be spring, and wood would be uh, stream, and fire would be river, and earth will be the Hussey point. And that's the metal order. Now with the yin, points in wood order, it applies to the 70% of the population. Uh, these points are in the textbook, liver one, heart eight, spleen three, lung eight, kidney 10. Those are all the horary points that we learned at school is in our textbook. Liver one is a wood well point. Heart eight is a second point. It's a fire point on a spring point. Uh, spleen three is an earth element on a stream point. Lung eight is a metal element on a river point. Kidney 10 is a water element on a sea point. It's because of this sequential order. Again, we learned this at school. Liver one is a wood point. Liver two is a fire point. Liver three is earth point. Liver four is metal point. Liver eight is a water point because this is in wood, fire, earth, metal, water sequence related to well, spring, stream, river, and sea. So that applies to all the other yin meridians in the wood order. All right, just to make sure we're on the same page here, liver one, that's in the corner of the nail. Heart eight, that's on the palm of the hand between the fourth and fifth metacarpal. And that's uh, usually on the line of the palm or right below the line of the palm. Spleen three, that's the uh, proximal to the uh, toe joint, the big toe joint. Long A, you have to be cautious and careful of not hitting the artery. And this is about one centimeter or one and a half centimeter uh, below the crease of the wrist. 
on the outside, the lateral side of the artery. That's long eight point. And kidney 10 is between the two tendons at the popliteal fossa behind the knee level. Doesn't have to be between the two tendons. Uh, it, it could be off from that a little bit. It still works, but specific side will be between the two tendons. All right, so those uh, yin horary points apply to the 70% of the population. Now, in the metal order, this applies to 30% of the population. Using the yin horary points, the metal order is the same idea as with the yang horary points, such as uh, long 11 is a metal point in the metal order. Long 11 is the first point, a, a well point, uh, because of the metal sequence or metal order, metal, water, wood, fire, earth, the first point is a metal point. Long 11 matches that criteria because it's a metal meridian and it's a metal point. It's a horary point for that reason. Second point is a water element and on a water meridian. Therefore, the kidney two meet that criteria. It's a second point and it's a water point. It's a horary point. Liver three is a wood point. It's a horary point. Heart four is a fourth point, metal, water, wood, fire. So heart four is a fire element, fire, horary point. Spleen nine is a fifth one. Um, it, it, that is also a horary point, and that's an earth horary point. Metal, water, wood, fire, earth. These are the new sets of horary points that apply to the 30% of the population. So if it's 100 people, 30% of the people are born with these active points. If it's 1,000 people, then 300 people are born with these active points as their horary points not the other uh, horary points that apply to the 70% of the population. Okay, so the same idea. Let's give an example of the spleen meridian. Spleen one is a metal point because of the metal order. It's a first uh, point, which is metal. Second is water, spleen two. Wood is spleen three. Fire is spleen five. Fifth point, the Hussey point is spleen nine. That's an earth point in the sequential order of metal, water, wood, fire, earth, uh, from well point to spring, to stream, to river, to uh, uh, sea. So in that order, it starts with the metal with these yin meridians. Okay, and so these are the horary points, long 11 at the corner of the nail. Kidney 2, that's below the navicular bone, uh, the tuberosity. So when you touch the side of your foot, there's a bump. It's a big bump that you feel, and it's below the big bump. Liver 3 is between the first and second metatarsal, about three centimeters above the web. Heart four is about three centimeters above um, the, the crease of the wrist. Spleen nine is at the, uh, the, the lower border of the uh, angle of the medial condyle, epicondyle of the tibia. So uh, when you put your finger up the inner side of the tibia and it starts angling up, well, at the point when it starts angling outwards is the spleen nine point. All right, review over again. We went over these uh, horary points, yang points, large intestine one, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine five, stomach 36, these are 70% of the population. 70% of the 
of the people in any population have these points as their horary points. Now, 30% in any population have different horary points. It's called bladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and UB 40. Uh, for the yang points or yin points, the, we learned that the horary points are liver 1, heart 8, spleen 3, lung 8, and kidney 10. That applies to 70% of the population. The other 30% of the population have different horary points. They're lung 11, kidney 2, liver 3, heart 4, and spleen 9. All right, so we will be taking a 10-minute break. But before we do, I'm sure people have questions. Please share your question now. Okay, you, you could unmute yourself and ask your question or go ahead, type in your question. If you don't have your question right now, we will come back in 10 minutes and uh, do the question and answer and then go on to the next uh, part of the class. Yeah, we will go, in, go into the technique of bisoma. So if you don't have any question right now, that's fine. It's 6.30. Uh, it's right now. What time is it? To, according to your time, I think it's 7 o'clock, 7.05. So we will be back at uh, 7.15 p.m. Okay, so here we are, we're back. Um, while we're, I'm making sure that everybody's attending, I will go over the um, acupuncture points uh, for, a few, uh, for a minute or two, and then we will get into the tech, acupuncture technique. I'm sure um, you wanna know more. Uh, what I just went over, a lot of it is uh, very um, straightforward to you, uh, but I do need to repeat just to make sure that uh, we're on the same page. Um, Again, there are two, 20 horary points. Uh, it's broken into five sets or four sets of five horary points each. And the first set of five horary points is large intestine one, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine five, and stomach 36. Those are the horary points that applies to 70% of the population. 70% of the population have horary points as large intestine 1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, stomach 36. Another set of horary points that applies to 30% of the population, that's gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, large intestine 5, and UB40. For the yin meridians, the horary points are large intestine 1, heart 8, spleen 3, lung 8, kidney 10. That applies to 70% of the population. Now, for the 30% of the population, for the yin horary points, they become different. That's lung 11, kidney 2, liver 3, heart 4, and spleen 9. All right, just one... Just going that over with you, now we're going over the specific techniques on how to use bisoma. Okay, let's do this first. Follow these five steps. Before I answer, go over this. Let me see if you have any questions. All right, uh, somebody asked, uh, you have explained yin and yang set of points, 70% and 30%. How do we come to know which set to be used first? Well, since 70% of the population have uh, the metal order 
of the yang points and what order of the yin points, that's what you do first. You don't do the 30% first because that's 30% likelihood that it's gonna work. But the one you try first has 70% likelihood that it's gonna work. Then, um, then that's the one you try first. So you do the Yang Horary points, do the 70% first. That's LI1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, and stomach 36. All right. And for the Yin Horary points, the one that you get 70% possibility of having this patient improve is to use liver 1, heart 8 spleen 3, lung A, and kidney 10. So you do the one that works better or has a higher chance of working than the one that has lesser chance of working. So the one that has 70% is a one that has more than twice likely work uh, better than the 30% points. Uh, second question, needle Purchasing person's contact. Okay. Okay. Come on. Yeah. All right. So these are the uh, five steps in doing the isoma acupuncture. As long as you follow these five steps, then you will get the result consistently. And you're doing this optimally and properly. First, you arbitrarily choose either yang or yin horary points. It's because yang is not better than yin, nor is yin better than yang. Um, there are no uh, yin problem and there are no yang problem. Even if it's a yin problem or yang problem, uh, then both yin and yang points work just as well. Uh, there is no differentiation. There's no diagnosis. I said that earlier. That includes this. You don't make a diagnosis into whether you use the yang or yin points. What you do is you either choose random, you randomly choose between yang and yin points. So a person comes in with a problem, just start doing the yang points. Or with the problem, start doing the yin points. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay, but once you choose yang, stay with the yang. Once you choose the yin, just stay with the yin. That's the first step. Randomly choose either yang or yin points to use. And then second step is to choose either the right side or left side of the body. Uh, you're choosing either the right or left. It doesn't matter. Uh, what that means is um, you could do the acupuncture on the same side of the problem. That's called ipsilateral. And you could do acupuncture on the opposite side of the problem. Uh, that's called contralateral. Or you could do acupuncture on both sides. The result is still the same. So uh, we'll talk about the both. Well, you have to do right and left side first. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to do the right and left side first. And verify both right and left side before you do both side acupuncture. In any case, acupuncture, you don't have to choose which side to use uh, based on the problem or the person. You randomly choose the right or left side to do the acupuncture. So let's say the person has right side carpal tunnel, right side carpal tunnel, and you give acupuncture on the right side, fine. The person has right side carpal tunnel, you give acupuncture on the left side, fine. The result is still good either way. So first step, you choose yang or yin points. You randomly choose, you arbitrarily choose it. There's no good reason why one is better than the other, okay? They're both good. And then right side, left side acupuncture, regardless of the problem, you choose the right side or left side, the result is still good, all right? And then the third step 
is to needle the 70% set. So if you choose the young points, then the 70% is large intestine one. Uh, you be 66, gallbladder 41, small intestine five, stomach 36. Okay. And then the second, uh, well, for the yin meridians, you choose the 70%, liver one, heart eight, spleen three, lung eight, kidney 10. Now, you give the 70% points, and if those points don't work, then you go to the fourth step, which is to do 30%. If 70% doesn't work, then you use the 30%. So let's say you chose the young points, and you did LI1, UB66, gallbladder 41, small intestine 5, and stomach 36. Now, um, you get to use different horary points. That's gallbladder 44, small intestine 2, stomach 43, LI5, UV40 for uh, the patient who did not have an improvement with the 70% young horary points. Now you're doing 30% young horary points. If you did, if you did the yin horary points, that's liver one, heart eight, spleen three, lung eight, uh, kidney ten, then the next set of horary points that's, that applies to the 30% of the population. That's lung 11, kidney 2, liver 3, heart 4, and spleen 9. So that applies to the 30% of the population. Okay, and, and then the fifth step is uh, how long you need to live for. It's, uh, you could needle for just one minute, that's fine. You can needle for 40 minutes, that's fine too. Uh, but to me, most optimal is between 20 to 30 minutes because not everybody has uh, an improvement right away. You gotta give the stimulation enough time to to set in place. So some people respond right away some people it takes time so you do you just gotta give it enough time for the improvement to kick in and most people they have hard time lying down for more than 40 minutes and even longer acupuncture is not actually better uh, so i think about 30 minutes is enough for people to have good significant improvement so as long as you follow these big five steps, then uh, you should get pretty good result with the patients. And we, I will go over more detail on this, but remember, but remember first step, choose the yang or yin points. Second, choose either right or left side of the body. Third, choose a 70% set. If the 70% doesn't work, then choose the 30% set. And the needle retention is about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. All right, I'm repeating this over again. Yang and yin points have the same result. There is no, there may be yang disease or yin disease. So for yang disease, you treat yin or for young, you treat young, uh, you don't have to go into that concept because the result is the same, regardless of the problem, whether you use the young points or whether you use the yin points. In the young points, there are two orders, metal order and wood order. Metal order applies to 70% of the population. Wood order applies to 30% of the population. For the yin horary points, wood order applies to 70% of the population, and metal order applies to 30% of the population. Um, hold on a moment. Hold on. I'm going to put you on a...
Okay, I'm back. All right, so then uh, regardless of the age, race, male or female, it doesn't matter. These, this pattern applies to people at any age, uh, different kind of uh, nationality or race or male or female, this pattern is the same. Okay, now I will also reveal to you the general outcome, how good and effective this bisoma acupuncture is. First, I need to say that there is nothing that applies 100% to everyone. There is no medicine, there is no prescription, there is no procedure uh, or surgery or any type of medical practice that is 100% effective. It's, nothing is 100% effective for 100 people okay, or 100% of the people. But by some acupuncture result is pretty good. In the clinic, it's one third, one third, one third. What I mean by that is one third of the population have high relief. The patients say, oh, this is really good. And one third of the patients have moderate. Oh yeah, significant. The result is pretty significant. And one third of the patients that I see, they have mild relief or no relief just a little bit it's not really worth getting acupuncture but they notice a little difference or they don't notice any difference so it's one third one third one third why is it like that it's because more than half the patients who come to my clinic is not their first choice they've been there done that this is one of the last choices uh, they've exhausted all the other options and the last thing to try is the acupuncture um, so that says several things. One is that uh, the problem might not be related to acupuncture. They're just hoping that acupuncture will be helpful. Okay. And the other is that the problem is so set in a long time that the change is very slow. Uh, the longer the problem it is, the slower it improves. And then the third reason is some people are sensitive to acupuncture. Some people are reactive to acupuncture and some people are not reactive to acupuncture. So low reactivity means that regardless of what you do, even if they're um, meant to improve very well, you know, just simple back pain or simple headache or, you know, like simple asthma, but they don't respond very well because acupuncture points, they're not sensitive to. So it's not just five element points. It's not just bisoma points. You could give acupuncture other places. They respond. They're just born that way. They're not that reactive or sensitive to acupuncture. So that's another factor that we need to consider, that not everybody responds the same way to acupuncture. And also the disease might be so chronic that it doesn't improve that fast. And uh, other is, is that the disease doesn't respond to acupuncture at all. They, the because not all diseases are treated with acupuncture obviously you know that so that's the reason why overall and at my clinic um again more than half the people come to my clinic uh because they've had the problem for so long and there hasn't been a good solution uh so that's why i see that overall improvement as one third one third one third the patients say yeah this is pretty good and then the other one third say, hey, yeah, this is helpful. And then the other uh, one third say, yeah, maybe some, maybe not. Maybe no improvement. Okay, that's the pattern that I see in my clinic. Outside of my clinic, it, it's a whole different story uh, because I gave acupuncture in large groups outside, uh, group meetings, gatherings, and my other colleagues done that too. And about 80 to 90% they give a report that the acupuncture, bisoma acupuncture was really helpful. And uh, those who give that report, it's about 80 to 90%. There's always a 10, 10 or 20% who have mild or low relief. Then why is this different outside of my clinic to 
inside of my clinic it's because again those who come to my clinic it's a stubborn problem okay uh, those who are outside of my clinic that's more of a representative of average people which means is that average as a whole uh, out there in the public 80 to 90 percent have really good significant response with the acupuncture and especially with the bisoma it, it, you could see the number uh, that's pretty high up there between 80 to 90 percent that's why acupuncture is here to stay and that's why bisoma acupuncture is relevant and is perhaps the best outcome and most reliable acupuncture method there is. Okay. All right. So then acupuncture, the result is the same. Whether you do acupuncture ipsilateral, contralateral, or bilateral. Ipsilateral means same side. So right side problem, acupuncture on the right side, the result is good. Left side problem, acupuncture on the left side, the result is good. Contralateral, right side problem, acupuncture on the left side, the result is good. The left side problem, acupuncture on the right side, result is good. All right. For bilateral, that's acupuncture on both sides, double the number of acupuncture points, double the stimulation, might not be even better but one side acupuncture is just as good as both side acupuncture so if you want to try both side acupuncture you want to make sure whether it's a metal order or wood order on the right side and then the other side make sure it's metal order or wood order because it's not a mirror image that the order metal and wood order it, in, it occurs independently from one side of the body to the other side of the body. So you have to do one side, make sure that's good. Okay, let's say you do metal order, that works, all right. And then the left side, you do metal order, that doesn't work. And you do the wood order, that works. Okay, great. Then now you could do both sides, right side metal order, left side wood order. So test one side at a time, and you see a good result, then that means that element order is correct and after you test both sides you do acupuncture on both sides acupuncture on both sides is still the result is the same that's why uh, in four needle technique the korean saam s-a-a-m four needle technique um they're they're known to uh, they tell you to do acupuncture on one side of the body because they recognize that just only four points is good enough Okay, so more isn't better. Uh, there's a range, and the range is not 10 acupuncture points. The range is between somewhere around four to eight points. That's optimal. So if you do more than eight points, the result might be better, but only slightly better. Uh, if you do um, acupuncture less than four points, acupuncture will be good, but it might not be as good as four points. All right. Let's go over to the next slide. All right, subjective, objective. Okay, the, there's different ways to measure. Basically, with the acupuncture, you're going to get subjective. How's your pain? You know, how's this? How's that? So you ask the patients and you give a feedback. And you also check a pulse. Checking pulse is also subjective because there's no machine that is able to tell you um, what you're noticing is the same. Uh, so pulse taking is also an art, and uh, self-assessment is an art. Uh, what, but it could also be objective in that, uh, for example, chemotherapy patient. Uh, with the blood test, they do the blood count before each chemo because chemo kills uh, anything that grows fast, divides fast, such as uh, uh, white blood cells and red blood cells. And uh, it could also elevate the... Um, liver enzyme ALT, AST, because chemo destroys things. And uh, with the bisoma acupuncture, you could see uh, that just by getting twice a week acupuncture, uh, the patient, uh, because they get the blood count before each chemotherapy, uh, that uh, they see that the numbers are the same. 
So after each chemo, it starts going down. The number of red blood cell, white blood cell starts going down. And then once they start on the acupuncture, it stays the same, even if they continue to get chemotherapy. So that's objective measurement. Right? So there's some things that you could measure objectively, but there are, um, it's pretty much mostly subjective experience, which is fine again, because uh, if it's good for the patient, the patient notices it, well, that, that's all, uh, that, that's what counts. Okay. Next, okay. Uh, how, how about bisoma works? Bisoma acupuncture, it's very um, interesting and it's quite simple in this way that, uh, uh, it, it, okay, acupuncture in general, as a, it affects the whole body by stimulating the, uh, the points that are most relevant to the person because some points are uh, more reactive and the other points are less reactive. Uh, so the, you stimulate the most reactive points and the result is just profuses everywhere through the body. The reason is, is because um, five element, it is, it, it is more categorical. Wood, fire, earth, metal, water. A person is made up of five elements and you're accessing each element that's most relevant uh, to that element, okay? So wood point, wood horary point is the most representative of wood. Okay, and fire point, fire horary point is most element of the fire of that person and so on. And with the uh, uh, earth horary point, metal horary point and water horary point. So just by doing those five points, you get to affect, uh, influence the, the whole five element aspect within the body. And that includes the meridians, like gallbladder and wood, mer uh, liver meridian are wood meridian, right? And spleen and stomach are the earth meridian, large intestine, lung are the um, uh, metal meridian. So when you access the metal on metal, uh, then you, you're um, influencing a lot of that metal aspect of the person. That includes the meridians. And, you know, meridians, they go all through the body. Um, and, 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 and so it becomes very targeted. It, it's like hitting the bullseye of the target. You know, the bullseye, all right? There's a dot in the middle and then there's a circle and circle and a bigger circle. So you hit the dot in the middle everything falls together. Or it's like fishing, you throw out a net, right? And you catch fish. So the net, it just spreads out all over, but there's only one point that you pull. So one place that you pull, and then the, the whole net closes, that's, that's, like, that's, that's what you're doing with this acupuncture. You're just getting the one spot and you pull on it and everything just, uh, you get to catch everything and and that's how the uh horary point seems to work that's why you get to treat so many variety at once different times uh different diseases just using the same points okay so on observation with the acupuncture uh, we learned um that uh, certain things we need to abide by, such as, you know, acupuncture needling with the flow or against the flow. Uh, let me read this off uh, to you, so, and then I'll do a little explanation. How to needle uh, in any order of insertion and extraction. What that means is you don't have to put in one needle in, in, in certain sequence, and you don't have to take out the needle in another sequence. It's uh, it doesn't matter which order you put the needles in and which order you take the needles out. The result is the same. Acupuncture, you could do perpendicular, horizontal, oblique with the flow of the meridian or against the flow of the meridian. The result is still the same. So we learned at school that if you put the needle against the flow, uh, then it'll sedate. 
if you put the needle with the flow, then it'll tonify. That's actually not true. Just stimulating the point uh, is going to have the body adjust itself, and the stimulation is um, the body adjusts to its own needs. So if it's deficient, it will supplement. If it's too much, then it will take out. So you don't tonify or sedate. The body does that. All you have to do is stimulate it. And so the direction of the needle against the flow or with the needle or with the flow, uh, it doesn't affect, you don't affect the increase or decrease of the energy. The body does it according to its need. So just stimulate and let the body do its job. Okay, so I mentioned by soma you could do that, this in combination with other styles, scalp, ear, uh, torso. Uh, as long as you don't use other five element points on the limbs, uh, but use other points, I think it will be a good combination. The results should be even better. And this could be used anywhere. Everywhere, I'm sure you've done, those who've done acupuncture, it's just applicable everywhere and anywhere. All right, great. Uh, well, there you go. I'm pretty much done with the webinar today. I think everything else is self-explanatory. Most important is for, for you to follow the five-step protocol, which is this one. All right, now we will go into question and answer. Before, yeah, go ahead, uh, type in the question or ask me a question, unmute yourself. I will tell you about tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be giving you the demonstration of how I do the acupuncture. And also we will go over the case studies. So these points and the theory and the technique, it all comes together and you start understanding how these are practically used. All right, let me look at any question, any put up any question here, any thoughts? Okay, then Rudolph or RK, do you have anything to say? Yeah, just I want, I'd like to know. I am Kumaran Angayakani. Hello, nice. And you are saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in acupuncture, we used to say that uh, in, uh, when uh, we choose the yin, uh, points for the chronic diseases and young for uh, some acute diseases like that they used to say and especially in sujo kanda sujo 68 whether it is uh, we have to choose accordingly a young or in point whether it is a chronic or acute um yeah that's a very good question let me repeat your question uh in different schools of thought uh, there are many different schools of thought is because human body is so complex that there is no one system that explains everything, that there's no one system that uh, pretty much does everything. So we have different systems in an attempt to understand the body, in an attempt to do a better job. And, and so we come up with different theories and different ideas, and some ideas have been around for a long time. For example, for yang problem or yang points is more used for uh, uh, acute problems and for yin disease used for more of a uh, chronic problems, yang problem uh, that that's could be uh, more related to heat type of problem or for yin uh, treat the, uh, uh, the cold type of problem. 
Hey, there's different ways uh, of trying to adjust and adopt because we're trying to make things even better, right? But by SOMA seems to address all these different concerns automatically. That's why it's so simple. You don't have to make it more complex because it treats these problems automatically. For Yang problem, you could use yin points. Result is just as good as if you use yang points. For yin problems, you could use yang points or yin points. The result is same good because the bisoma is that automatic, or I should say bisoma is that uh, correct that you don't have to create some more diverse or extra way of explaining and doing things. Thank you, Dr. It's my pleasure, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, any other question? Any other thoughts? What about the sites? What about the sites? It's said you have to choose what the sites Yes. Yes, repeat the que uh, question again. I think, uh, RK, can you say that again? Yes. Uh, which side do we have to use? Right. You do one side. Don't do both sides. You can do both sides, but that's after you do the right side and left side. All right. So which side do you have to use? You you randomly choose one side. There's no, again, it's so automatic that it doesn't matter which side you choose. Acupuncture on the right side has the same result as acupuncture on the left side. So uh, let's say you have a shoulder pain, one side shoulder pain, and you give acupuncture on this side. Okay, this is my left side. It looks like the right side from maybe where you're looking at. Okay, so on this side, I give acupuncture on this side. The result is as good as if I give acupuncture on this side, although you have problem over here. So ipsilateral, which means same side, contralateral, which means opposite side, the result is the same. Okay, what about headache? Okay, right side headache or the whole headache or back of the headache or front of the headache, inside of the head. The, the right side, left side acupuncture is still good. What about PMS? What about cramp? I mean, it could be like all over, right? One side more than the other side, but who knows? So who knows as in just because more pain on the right side doesn't mean there's more problem on the right side. It could be just a refer pain. Uh, so right and left, it doesn't make, beyond certain point, it start, doesn't make any sense because how do we know what is right and what is left? Some are clear and some are not clear, like asthma, or right side, left side, or stomach pain, the right side, left side. Uh, so don't think about right or left problem or right side or left side disease. Just think of it as, I'm just gonna give acupuncture on right side or left side, it doesn't matter, right? The result is good. Does that address the question? Thank you, sir. What about the bilateral? You see, you don't have any bilateral. See, one side, one side. Yeah, uh, bilateral, I use bilateral um, after I give acupuncture on each side. So let's say the person has come in with the back pain. Okay, seven out of 10. I give acupuncture on the right side. Uh, and, and then he went down to uh, uh, five out of 10, okay? And then I give acupuncture on the right side again, and he went down to four out of 10. All right, good, so it's, it's, it's helpful, okay. And then on the left side, I give acupuncture, and it went down to two out of 10. I give acupuncture on the left side again, it went down to one out of 10. All right, good. So right side and left side, acupuncture, I know which points to use. Now I do both sides. 
right? So then, um, Sir, probably he wants to know whether if you apply that in points or yang points, see, they is it to the same points on the same side, or can the two sets of points which you say you need that can be done? That's alternative. Or like that, or it's the same points on bilateral. Yeah. Yang uh, points the... you choose. You have to apply both sides yang, or in points if you choose, you have to apply in points on both sides. That is a. Yeah, that's also arbitrary. Okay. Uh, as an example, you give yang on the right side, and then you give yang on the left side, then you do both yang, right and left side. Let's say you do right side yang points and it's good, all right. And then you do the yin points on the left side, uh, and the yin points are good. Then now you can do yin points and yin points together. So there's no rule you have to do yang or yin, or you have to do both yang on both sides or yin on both sides. You could do yin on one side and you could do yang on the other side. Um, and here's another question. Uh, I said you have said same set can be used for a same person even after revisited for a new issue. How does it work? Yes, you could use the same points for different problems. You could use the same points for the same problem different times, um, even for a new issue, new problem, same points. How does it work? It's because it's constitutional. You're born with the points. So the points go through the body and help the body to self-heal. These acu acupuncture, don't think in any any acupuncture that you do, okay, any style that you do, don't think acupuncture is for a disease. Don't think it's for a problem. If you do it that way, uh, then your result will be limited in any acupuncture. That's why there's theory. In, a, in the acupuncture school, there's a theory. When you work with the idea, then you get to treat the disease, you get to treat the syndrome, you get to treat the person, right? So have the person treated, not have the disease treated. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Let me see. After needling, do we have to wait until 30 minutes to know whether yes. it works or not? Yes, I'd like to know. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, I like to know yeah, 30 minutes would be good because I don't know the exact number, but let's say 40% uh, have good relief after five or 10 minutes. But, but there are people who will respond more if you wait longer than 10 minutes. If you look for results right away, that's not good. It's stressful to you. It's stressful to the uh, patient. They try to get the improvement right away and force the improvement. Don't do that. Don't look for an improvement right away. I tell my patient, I tell my patients to give it six treatments. And I have people lie down for about 30 minutes, 25 minutes on average. Uh, and I don't ask for an improvement right away. I don't ask for people to notice an improvement right away. 
I asked them about how they did when they come back next time. It's because you cannot get results right away for 100%. There's a significant number of people who get results right away, all right? Those who get improvement right away is probably about half, all right? And then some people need the same points, same treatment several times, several visits. And so you don't want to exclude that those group of people who have slow improvement. So it's a good practice not to look for an improvement right away, but it's a good practice to tell patients to give it about six treatments and have six times, then if they improve right away, then they're very happy because you did not give them an expectation of one treatment or two treatments and you have to have an improvement because they'll have the same expectation and they'll put a lot of stress on you. Tell them to give it six treatments coming in twice a week or three times a week. So within two weeks or three weeks, then people have to trust you with that. Don't have people improve right now. That's not good. That's putting too much expectation on the practitioner and too much expectation on the self. It's better to have the slow improving people included. Right? And if there are people who wants to have an improvement right away, don't follow that. They're they're putting too much stress on you and they're putting in on too much expectation beyond what's reasonable. So reasonable expectation is good. Don't force it to make a better, faster improvement. Bisoma is very fast, is very good, highly reliable. It's long-term, it's not good for the practice to have the result very fast. Okay, because they're gonna tell other people, oh, this this practitioner is so good, only one treatment or only two treatments. Uh, then everybody else is gonna come and go, oh yeah, you know, one or two treatments, right? That's I'm gonna that's all the chance that I'm gonna give you because other people told me that you you do a very good job, only one or two treatments. So that's why it's not a good to do that and you will not have a good credibility with the community if you expect a fast improvement you expect it but you don't express that with the patient i know i said a lot of it um, because i went through that experience for a long time all right any other question how often we have to treat actually uh, what's the question how often we have to treat the things um if for my clinic uh, people are quite busy so i tell people to come twice a week sometimes three times a week i know in korea people come every day a lot of people get acupuncture every day uh i there's a saying that you cannot get too many treatments but you could always not get enough treatment so acupuncture in the morning acupuncture in the afternoon twice a day that's fine too Make sure you get paid well. That's important. Um, so, pay well means is this because acupuncture is so much better in many ways than Western medicine. And you know, Western medicine, they charge a lot of money. So, with acupuncture, you also charge a lot of money. Okay, question. And Charlie, can you mute yourself, please? I, I, I think there's a background noise. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I could mute. Yeah, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, good. Right. I'm gonna mute some people here so I could other people could hear what I say. All right, there we go. Um what's the question? 
entirely unique version of acupuncture. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I would like to know how far we can with bisomal pattern anxiety related disorders, which all disorders with patients who were long time neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. Yes, antidepressant, SSRI, uh, benzodiazepine, opiates and uh, different kind of medication when they stop it uh, they go uh, withdraw uh, acupuncture think of it this way acupuncture they don't is not uh, it does not differentiate between physical body and mental body physical body is easier to measure that's why we talk about pain inflammation back pain and shoulder pain acupuncture is very good for also mental body including brain chemical balance. Uh, so yes, do bisomal acupuncture for anxiety, depression, and withdrawal from SSRI, benzodiazepine, which are antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication, and also for um, uh, withdrawal from drugs. Okay. Uh, so then, yeah, definitely use bisoma. I get very good result out of it. Next question. How do you create a strategy to make your patient understand how much treatment to be taken? Yeah, that's it. Uh, don't have patients have a high expectation. Okay, Give patients low expectation. You have high expectation. I tell my patients six treatments. Okay, That's most people I tell them six treatments. And people are realistic about it. They go to a chiropractor, they go to physical therapy, they go to a doctor, and they all tell them it's not right away. Okay. You gotta give it six treatments or ten treatments or twelve visits. You gotta give it one month or two months or three months or six months. So say the same thing. Even if acupuncture is better, tell them uh, that you gotta give it this number of treatments, right? So then some people improve fast and some people improve slow. So in case you get to treat the slow improving people. And in case, even if they're fast, the acupuncture result might not be fast for them, and depending on the stimulation time of the day and what other influences they're involved. So it, it might, the same treatment does not have the same result every time. There's variation, All right? Even six treatment is, that's, that's considered pretty good, pretty fast. Right. Again, other people, other practitioners, uh, they 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 say something like ten or twelve visits um, for uh, not acupuncturists, other pro professions. Uh, so uh, don't again convey the message to the patient that you're going to be better in one or two treatments, or you're going to be better right now. Okay, don't do that. Um, Okay, nose disturbances, sinusitis, hay fever. Uh, if it's that, then acupuncture is very helpful. But uh, hay fever or sinusitis, that, that problem has a lot to do with wrong foods. So if they eat the wrong food ingredients, they have it. So you have to identify which foods are bad. And that's related to tetrasoma, the constitutional medicine. So that's uh, the next step that we'll get, get into. How many sittings required? Yeah, six visits, average. Uh, Sujok needles enough. You could use small needles, but it's fine. I like to use a 0.18 or 0 0.20 diameter by uh, 15 millimeter. That's one ton. 15 meter is 1.1.5 centimeter in length. So just use those. Uh, then, then you know you're stimulating the acupuncture point properly. The sujok needles might be a little too small at times. It's fine for young kids and teenagers, but not regular for adults. All right, good. Any other thoughts? Any other question? I know I want to make sure I address uh, any smaller or bigger uh, questions that you have. Um, I'll just wrap up. As I wrap up, more questions, bring it up. Uh, so again, tomorrow, I'll see you at the same time, 6 p.m., and um, and I walk over the acupuncture demonstration and also the case studies. So then you'll more understand specifically. Uh, it'll be a whole lot easier for you to start practicing uh, once I go through that tomorrow with you. Okay, yes, thank you, my pleasure. Um, RK, uh, Rudolph, any final say? Thank you. Yes.
Okay. All right. I'm so glad. All right. Thank you for Thank attending. You. Thank you. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Dr. Lin, for the great session. We all have learned a lot from you. We are looking forward for tomorrow's session. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Look Thank you, seeing. sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank right. you, Dr. Okay.